lot of empty tanks and you're used to seeing them full of snakes. In this video, I'm going to tell you why they're empty now and how to make a rack system at the cheapest cost but have it work absolutely amazing. You're watching Beauty Snakes. Hey guys, as you see right behind me, I have this big, huge white box. Now, what this is, is this is my snake almost greenhouse per se. What it is, I took a nice shelving system and lined it with shower curtain to insulate it. And I have my heater on the inside. Now I'm going to show you how this properly heats all of my tanks. So, here we go. I have Velcro on here so it's easily removed. And what that does is it just literally makes it to where I can just pull it down real quick and put it back up real quick. So I still have access to all the animals. Now as you see in here, I got these big green totes. Now they're not the biggest in the world, but they get the job done for the animals. I have them all labeled and numbered according to which animal is in there for my computer system so I know which animal is in there. Now what I did is I took the totes and as you see right here on the bottom, I put a little lift on it. And that's so it holds the toe on an angle for heat. Now, when you come up here, and you look right here, there's a nice size hole there. That's for the heat to go up to, to give a hot side. And then where it's lowest is a cold side, because everybody knows hot air rises, cold air falls. So, I have a nice heater, the kind that I had heat in the snake room, inside of here. So as it heats down here, those vents have heat going up them, hitting them, going around the tub, and just continuing to go upwards. As the shower curtains basically make it into a greenhouse. Now ever since I started doing this, the temperature, the humidity has been absolutely flawless. As you see with uh, Shag here, uh, Coastal Carpet Python, you see all this moisture on the sides of the walls. And that's just from his water dish. Now granted, in here, there's more of a tendency that they knock it over a lot, so I'm constantly putting water in there every day. But I have never had my snakes doing better than they are now. And I'm absolutely loving it because they're shedding more regularly, they're shedding better, they're just absolutely loving it. Now I have noticed by going to this system, a couple of them have become a little more aggressive because they don't see humans as much so they're not interacting with us as, us as much so their wild tendencies have come out a little bit but I have not had any problems besides that. Alright guys, this segment is what's new. Now I'm going to show you three new snakes that I have because recently, as you saw in my last video, I started doing a rescue program with a lot of the reptiles in the area because a lot of people are trying to get rid of animals because they don't realize the commitment that it takes. So this is not one of the rescues. This is actually a new one that I got at the last reptile show. It's a jungle carpet python. Um, as you see, I'm wearing one glove and I have my hook in hand. Now, I've been bit many times, but it doesn't mean I like to be bit. So I kind of try to prevent it at all costs. Um, and as you know, carpet pythons as babies tend to be a lot more aggressive. So this is my new jungle carpet python. His name is Yellow. Um, and it kind of goes with the whole uh, theme that I do with all my other carpet pythons. Ellie's Yellow Shag Carpet. So I think it's kind of cool that all their names actually form a sentence. Um, she's beautiful. I'm really hoping I could get her up to breeding size uh, by next season, but I don't really think that's going to happen. Kind of a really finicky eater. Um, it's been very difficult to me to get her on to uh, frozen thawed. She prefers live. She pref that's just where she's trying to do it. As you can see, she's kind of coiling up. She sees my hand moving. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put her back in her tank, let her down. She can be kind of a stickler to get off because she likes to wrap. Try not to get bit because, well, that's just never fun. Blah. 
Now this one here, um, I'm pretty sure it's just a regular corn snake, but some of the gray that he has kind of throws me off, thinking he might be something else. Um, he's only about two years old. He's very healthy. This was one of the rescues I just got him the other day. And when I say rescues, I don't necessarily mean that I get them from bad owners or people that just are not taking care of them well. It's more or less that people don't realize the responsibility and the time and care it gets into these animals. So they get to a point where they lose interest in the animal. And then that's where the taking care of them will slightly go down just a tad bit. And they realize it. So they, they call me. I come pick up the animal. Sadly, I have to pick up their aquarium too all the time. Anybody that needs aquariums, just let me know. I got too many of them. So... This is the new one. I haven't named him yet. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep him myself or try to find him a new home. It is a male corn snake. He actually has really beautiful colors. I actually really like him. I'm thinking about breeding him with my Sunrise Snow Corn if I can get him up to size by next year. Now this one is just a regular baby ball python. But i got to say, it's been a mystery to me. When I first got him, he still had his belly button, so he was straight out of the egg. But as you see, he has a lot of gray here. But when he first got him, his entire spine down the entire length of his body was a solid yellow. It was absolutely gorgeous. It's why I picked him out. But all of a sudden, recently, he's been starting to turn this gray color, which I personally don't fully understand. But also, as you guys know, I'm not really a ball python guy. But his scales are perfectly healthy, they're very moist, he's kept in a high humidity tote, but he's doing good, he's a great snake, kind of a finicky eater, but we'll get him there. Snake up. Now as you guys saw in my last video, this was a very, very highly aggressive red tail boa. Now I still don't trust him, that's why I kind of am holding his head, but as you see, He's mellowing out a tremendous amount. He's not acting as aggressive, which I'm really happy with because me personally, a snake this size, I really don't like having them when they're this aggressive. But he's chilling out a lot. He's having a great time. He's loving his new habitat, which honestly, I probably have him in a little bit of a smaller habitat than he should have, but the biggest I have is a 55 gallon. I'll probably get him a nice size tote here in a little bit but he's doing great he's about to shed he just got rid of his blue eyes um, as you see he really has just totally mellowed out I think the stress of moving around and leaving his habitat really got to him but the really funny part is if I put him back in his tank and in a couple hours try to get him out again he will turn aggressive again mouth open trying to bite me so I don't fully understand that but I'm slowly working with him trying to get him up to the status that he should be. Alright guys, you've been watching Beauty Snakes. I showed you a way to make your own rack system that just works awesome. I did a snake update on this big guy here and as you see he's still very chill in my arms. Still needs a lot of work before I'll trust him, but we're getting there. I showed you a couple of my new animals. Of course, we are always getting new animals. So, you've been watching Beauty Snakes. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Scarf.